Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hide, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, and this is another episode of the Insane Asylum, known as WFAN. They're coming to take me away, haha, they're coming to take me away, ho ho, hee hee, haha, to the funny part. So welcome back to the Baseball Hut 2. I hope you, you like this video. I, I talk a lot about uh, these clowns at WFAN and really uh, and how they have this war against our favorite team, the New York Mets, America's team. And they've been waging this war for 30 plus years. And nobody, and the Hut means nobody stands up to them. There is no alternative for us to get any kind of fairness. And that's all I ever asked for. It's fairness. They don't get it from anywhere uh, on the on the radio. Uh, they had a competitor that's ESPN New York, but ESPN New York basically waved the white flag. They do not do any more. They they're not going to have the FM dial for their station. They're going the, Disney's going to sell it, and we're going to be stuck. If you listen, or you're going to be stuck listening to WFAN with no real competitor. Uh, and that's too bad. But if you don't like WFN, so many people have written to me, tell me how much they hate all these different individuals. How much they despise some of these people. Because of how unfairly they talk about the Mets, how they do nothing but complain, bitch, and moan, and whine. And there's no bigger one, no bigger whiner, than the old fart, Joe Beningo. Now, Joe Beningo's been there for 30 years. And, and some people have told me, you know... You should leave him alone. He's an institution. He's been around for 30 years. You've been around for 30 seconds. No, I have not. I listened to the station before he was on that station, on that radio station when I was a little kid, a little hut. So I remember how it was. It would have its moments, but not to this insane uh, nonsense. Now, Joe supposedly retired two years ago and then returned uh, sometime in July of 2020 to the Metro playing great. And this guy completely brought his dark cloud and dragged down not only the Mets, but the Jets. Now, uh, you're going to say, well, this is ridiculous. He has nothing to do with it. When you have a bad uh, spirit hanging around for any reason, it drags everything down. And he's a jinx. And I'm going to be very honest with you, very honest in these videos. I don't like him. I never liked his, his the way he presents himself on the radio. I still don't. I I just don't like him. I never did. For all these years, I never liked him. I'm going to be very honest. I have a headline from Odyssey.com. Joe B. David Stearns is here to run Mets like Brewers. Help Steve Cohn recover from financial losses. Okay. Now, the first part. Let's go to the Brewers, shall we? Let me look at their uh, baseball reference. Now, since he's been running that team... They've been playing really well. They were one of the best teams in, in baseball. Shall we go to the list? Now, he took over, I guess, in 2015. It took him a couple of years to turn that situation around. And 2015, they lost. They won 68 games. This is the Brewers. In 2016, they won 73 games. In 2017, they finished in second place, 86 wins. In 2018, 96 wins, first place. Went to the NLCS. 2019, won 89 games. Uh, lost a wild card series. A wild card game. Won 89 games. 2020, they went to postseason. 29-31. We don't necessarily count um, the, the, you know, the COVID year. Uh, 2021, won 95 games. Lost in the NLDS. 2022, won 86 games, didn't make postseason. And 2023, won 92 games, won the division, and lost a wild card game, wild card series. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if it's three of those six years, folks, the Brewers finished in third place. And two of those other years, they finished in second place. So what's wrong with him running the Mets like the Brewers? Let me read you this article. It's very, uh, it's very strange. He's a strange individual. That this is the kind of stuff where the, the music is very much in, in tune with him. You know, the funny farm and stuff. Joe Benigno was on, on uh, with Evan and Tiki 
Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This article so screwed up. Joe Beninga was one of Evan and Tiki's many guests for that Throwback Thursday special on six on six sixty a.m. I wouldn't mention. He's on all the time. What are they throwing him back to for? And of course, he sounded off in the Mets in their offseason that the David Stearns told reporters that adding another bat wasn't essential for the 24 roster. Quote, What is he doing? He's running the team like they're the Brewers, Joe said. That's why they brought him here. I'm telling you. Now, I would mention, for the last three years, the rumor was the Mets were waiting for David Stearns to be available. I'm sure this dumb cuff was talking about it on his program with Evan Roberts. Cohen lost so much money and has to pay $100 million in luxury tax. And this guy is here to run the team like the Brewers. I'm telling you right now, they're not spending any money. They don't think it's a priority. Come on, it's a disgrace. How much money? You said it right here, dumb cuff. They lost $100 million. He spent $100 million. How much money are you going to spend? When does it stop? These assholes did nothing but piss and moan about the Wopons. And he mentions the Wopons in, in, in some of these comments. They, and then he makes a threat. They, guys like him always make threats. They better sign Pete. It's always that. That's always where it goes. Joe's convinced the days of Steve Cohen flexing his financial might are over. And Stearns was brought in to help the Mets' bottom line in the wake of paying for the likes of Justin Verlander. And Max Scherzer to leave after the... A record high payroll team was over, was out of the race by July. Now, they have so much money on the books. It's dead money. James McCann is still on the payroll, folks. If you don't know that. Fairland is on the, on the payroll. Scherz is on the payroll. And why do you think they got these top prospects that they're willing to eat that money? Now, this is the most outrageous thing that, that this dumb cuff says. We're getting hosed. For years we had the world pots and we had to deal with all that. Cohen comes in with all this money. We're going to win in five years and halfway through the third one, they punted. If you're not paying attention to what was going on with that team, this guy said not to move. He said to keep Verlander. Okay. I, I think that's what he said. This guy wanted to hold on to these. And you, you were watching this team. They weren't getting any better. That's what I don't understand. If you, were, if you had a brain... You knew that the Mets were not going to uh, get the postseason in April. You could see it. You could feel it. You could feel it. But he wants to keep spending money and spending money and spending money and spending money. It's not his money, I guess. I'm sure he's not spending money like this. Well, he probably is, but that's why he came back to work. That's probably he's, he's working again. He's probably spent so much money in his retirement, he has to make money again. That's probably why he's back, to be honest with you. Now, your host... It's fair. They spent a lot of money. Is this a good free agent market? No. It's a bad free agent market. Otani wasn't coming here. Yamamoto, they tried to get Yamamoto. He didn't really want to come here. Unless they were going to spend $400 million. He wasn't coming here. That's Yamamoto. So, who are you going to give a big contract? Blake Schnell? He's terrible. This guy's always walk, he walks to the walks ballpark. You're going to give... a uh, Ace money to Jordan Montgomery. He's not an ace. He's a number three starter. You know, he's a little shaky. But then, I mean, for all these years, these guys, like Beningo, they complain that Wilpons, the Wilpons are here. They don't spend money. They don't do this. They don't do that. All right, we get an owner, and they don't, and, and of course, Sandy Olson's not running the team right. They get, so, so the Wilpons, they sell the team. We get a uh, new owner. He spends the money that they said to spend. Okay. They spend the money. Uh, the first year didn't work out. Um, they had injuries. The second year, uh, they won a lot of games. They complained about winning the games. They complained it was a disaster after the fact. Then they don't. Then they spend more money the, the second year, the third year, and he's losing money. And he is admitting he's lost a lot of money. This is Steve Cohen, and he took in a, took in a lot of debt. Still not good enough. What do you want, Beningo? What do you want? You want to spend money on players that aren't good? Next year is a different story. Next year you have big players on the market, good players on the market. The quality of the free agents is much better. Zach Wheeler, Corbin Burns, Juan Soto, big players on the market. Then you have a gripe. They don't bring in those guys in next year. 
then you have a gripe. And this is another episode of the insane asylum known as WFAN. They're coming to take me away, haha. They're coming to take me away, ho ho, hee hee, haha. To the funny part.